Hi guys, here is proof of my love for you. It is 12.30 in the morning. I have decided that you need these notes down and dirty quick and you need them with me, not just for you to like look at them and transcribe from a PowerPoint into um, notes blindly, but um, also my loaner computer doesn't have the video editing software that I'm used to using. So now I'm using a brand new one that I've never used before, but I'm gonna experiment and we're gonna see how it goes. So let's talk about inductive versus deductive reasoning, two different kinds of reasoning. So deductive reasoning is where you deduce. So you work from really general to really specific. So you start with super general thoughts and you get yourself down to a very specific thought. It's also called the top down approach. So you start at the top with a, a big old general statement and you get yourself down to a narrowed viewpoint. So this is defined as the reasoning in which the conclusion is reached from previously known facts. As long as the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Now there's an assumption there. The assumption is that the premises are true. As long as they are true, the conclusion must be true. Um, but if your premises are false, then the conclusion is not going to be uh, true. So it's gonna end with you concluding some result. So here's an example of here's one premise. All of the objects that I have in this box sitting in my lap are black. So I've got a box on my lap, every object in it is black. Another thing I'm gonna tell you is that I've just pulled three objects out of the box. And when I've pulled three objects out of the box, all of these objects have come from the box. So if I know that all of the objects in the box are black and I've just pulled three objects from the box, then we can logically conclude what? That these objects are black. These objects that I've pulled out are black. Now, if I've lied to you and not everything in the box is black, then my conclusion might be wrong. So I might have pulled something red out of the box, but that's because one of the premises was false. So this is where we go from general to specific. Okay, we go from general to spe specific. So we start with a very wide, um, uh, rule, all objects in the box are black, and we get to a very narrow conclusion, these objects are black. Inductive reasoning is the opposite. We go from specific observations toward generalization. So we just go the opposite direction. So sometimes it is called a bottom-up approach. It's a process of reasoning in which the premises of an argument support the conclusion, but they do not ensure it. So it's not definite. So with deductive reasoning, as long as the premises were true, then you've got a great conclusion at the end. With inductive reasoning, you've got a maybe conclusion at the end. Um, with inductive reasoning, you hypothesize a rule. So you come up with sort of a general rule because we're going to the general. So if we take that same example of the box with the objects in it, if I say to you here, I'm holding some objects that, and I took these objects out of the box. Um, and these objects that I'm holding in front of you are black. So all of these objects came out of the box. Every one of these objects is black. You can conclude, hey, I think it's likely then that all objects in the box are black. You could be wrong. It could be that I just happened to have grabbed three black objects out of that box and all the red, yellow, and green ones are left inside that box. But you could also be right that all of the objects in the box are black. So this one goes from specific to general. This one goes to spe from specific to general. So we go from a specific statement, these exact objects are from the box, to a very general rule. All objects in the box are black. So now, these aren't really concrete examples, but let's walk through a couple others. So if we start with this premise, all the dogs in the kennel are mean, and another premise, these dogs are from the kennel. What conclusion can you draw? Go ahead and pause the video and write down a conclusion that you think you can draw. Hopefully you said, these dogs are mean. So if all the dogs in the kennel are mean and these dogs are from the kennel, then these dogs must be mean. Of course, that's blasphemy. No dogs are mean. They are all good boys and good girls. They are just misunderstood. Um, okay, so premise number one, is this general or specific? So when we say all the dogs in the kennel are mean, is that general or specific? Go ahead, commit. That's general. Okay, so then our conclusion, is that general or is that specific? That's specific. 
Good. All right. Now, last one. What type of reasoning was this? Inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning? Come on, you got to decide. Mark something. Deductive. That's deductive reasoning. All right, let's go on to another example. First premise, these dogs are from the kennel. Next premise, these dogs are mean. What's your conclusion that you can draw based on these two premises? Got to write it down. Okay, hopefully you wrote down something like, all dogs from the kennel are mean. Again, rude, not true. So premise number one, these dogs are from the kennel. Is that general or is that specific? That's specific. Conclusion, is that general or is that specific? That's general, because we're talking about all dogs. So then type of reasoning, is that inductive or deductive? We're going from specific to general, so that's inductive reasoning. Okay, so don't buy, you don't need to write all of this down. This is just a... I think this is dictionary.com um, definition, but deductive reasoning typically moves from general truths to specific conclusions. It opens with an expansive explanation, so statements known or believed to be true, and continues with predictions for specific observations supporting it. Deductive reasoning is narrow in nature and is concerned with testing or confirming a hypothesis. It is dependent on its premises. For example, a false premise can lead to a false result, and inconclusive premises will also yield an inconclusive conclusion. That's an oxymoron. Deductive reasoning leads to a confirmation or not of our original theories. It guarantees the correctness of a conclusion, again, assuming that the premises are correct. Logic is the authority in the deductive method. So inductive reasoning then moves from specific details and observations, typically of nature, to the more general underlying principles or process that explains them. For example, Newton's law of gravity. It is open-ended and exploratory, especially at the beginning. The premises of an inductive argument are believed to support the conclusion, but do not ensure it. Thus, the conclusion of an induction is regarded as a hypothesis. In the inductive method, also called the scientific method, observation of nature is the authority. So truthfully, in forensic science, we use both of these methods. We just have to be aware which one we're using at any given time, because that's going to help us remember, hey, this has to be true, or no, this just might be true. So if we're doing deductive reasoning, we can say this has to be true, but then the other thing we have to do is we have to stop and check our premises. Are our premises true? Or is there a chance any of our premises are incorrect? If any of our premises are incorrect, then our deduction may not be correct, okay? And then we know, of course, with inductive reasoning, always, no matter how good you are with inductive reasoning, you could be wrong because that's the nature of inductive reasoning. All right, hopefully that helped a little bit and we will talk a little bit more about this in class.